Welcome to the Website Update Training. This class is designed and recommended for school website editors who last had training prior to July of 2019. The goal is to present the items that are required now due to changes in board and court mandates, and to clarify operational changes made to the school desk platform and how they affect the manner in which editors do their tasks. Changes planned through the end of the calendar year of 2019 are included. Let's begin. These are the topics which will be covered in this presentation. The first item, the change to responsive mode, has had the most significant impact on how editing is accomplished. The other items deal more with content requirements and changes. The change to responsive mode was implemented in November of 2018. Prior to this, each site had multiple layout or styling sheets that determined how it would be presented on each type of viewing device. Changing to responsive mode means that now we have essentially one layout that is constantly resizing itself to match the device. Every pane and module is now fluid with minimum and maximum sizes, determining how it displays as opposed to hard-coded sizes for each device. This change means that items placed on the page also need to abandon the idea of hard-coded formatting. In the past, when adding a new module to a page, you were able to drag the module from the Add menu bar down to the location on the page. This is no longer a good way to place a new module because the headers are now editable and are affected by dragging motions. Instead, hover over the crossed arrows and then choose the correct location from the list. The first item that we need to be careful about is placing carriage returns in our code. Carriage returns should only be used when you want to start a new paragraph. They should never be used to create a more pleasing spacing as the spacing will be different on every device. Once you complete a new entry, it is always worth checking it out on your phone to see what most parents will see, since most parents use their phones to view the website. More of our users are viewing our sites on a phone than anywhere else, so if a compromise needs to be made, it is important to favor what looks good on the phone. One of the changes that has caused the most problems when working with a responsive website is the way images need to be inserted. In the past, we gave an image width and height dimension in pixels. In a responsive scenario, pixels do not give us good results. As the size of the module shrinks to fit a smaller window or device, the pixel size we designated may be larger than the available area causing portions of the site to run off on the right side. When this happens, most mobile devices do not allow you to even scroll to the hidden content. In order to give the platform better information to make resizing decisions, all images should be inserted with the percentage of the width of the module you wish the image to occupy. This way, the system can always resize based on its current dimensions. To do this, we place the percentage in the width box in the image properties, making sure to include the percentage symbol. It is also required that you make the height entry blank. The alternate text is still required, and please remember that the alternate text must include any text that is visible on the image. For this reason, you will want people to provide event flyers as readable text PDFs instead of JPEG images. An extra point to be aware of when sizing is that the system also uses the original size of an image when determining how to resize it. In this example, both logos are occupying the same percentage of the module. However, because one is only 125 pixels wide and the other is 1200 pixels wide, unusual results happen at the smallest screen size. This can be avoided by sizing items that occupy similar space with similar starting sizes. Requests are received regularly from administration, in many cases passed on from the governing board. The following board required changes show our solution for handling the notable requests from last year. There are many programs that are district-wide that need to be accessed from all school websites. In the past, we have placed these items in modules which were inserted on the right-hand side of each site. At times, this meant that a significant amount of real estate was occupied by these modules. To use less space and provide a consistent area that would not interfere with the position of other modules, an icon bar was created to house the logos for these programs and the links to reach the correct viewing page. Items are added and deleted from one central point as needed and require no update by the school staff. To satisfy the board directive to provide the address, phone, and hours for each school at the top of each page, two narrow bars were inserted on each school site to house this information. These two modules are specifically coded in HTML. So if you need changes made, please email them to sally.jacunski at tsd1.org. In order to meet the board directive for every school to prominently display its major academic programs, small versions of the program logos were added to the header of each school site. These will link to a page on the school site which describes how the program is designed at that school. These academic programs, plus other school-based programs, will also be available from the main menu bar under a tab called Programs. Two other new tabs were added to all school sites, the Family tab and the Students tab. Both of these tabs have pages containing information or resources for the named group. 
For example, library or counselor pages go under the Students tab, while parent organizations, site council, and family resources go under the Family tab. In addition to administrative and governing board requirements, we are also subject to requirements imposed by the court overseeing our desegregation case. These sometimes arrive as suggestions or requests and sometimes as direct court orders. Regardless of how they arrive, it is in the interest of our reaching unitary status that we comply to the best of our ability. The first notable request from the court was for an anonymous common application to be added to each school site, as well as an in-person common application to be added to each school front office. A form was placed on every school site which can be accessed by a button on the homepage. The comments that come in are forwarded to the school principal, the assistant superintendent for the region, the family outreach department, and the director of communications. Other parties may be included if the subject warrants. If the comment deals with the school's administrative staff, they are excluded from the group that receives the forwarded comment. Last May, we received a court order requiring a substantial amount of information to be presented on every school site, including a number of links to certain pages on the district website. We added a district links tab to the school site main menu and placed all the relevant links under this tab. At the same time, we removed any module on the school sites that had contained these links already. This work was done centrally, so nothing was required of the school. If there are any errors or concerns, please contact sally.jacunski at tosd1.org. The next item required is a welcome back letter from the principal to be placed prominently on the school homepage. This letter needs to be the first item in the school information module, which can be found on every site. In order to satisfy ADA accommodations, this letter needs to be created as a text document, then saved in PDF format before it is uploaded. You are not able to scan a document off the copier to PDF, because it creates an image file that cannot be interpreted by the text-to-speech software. Perhaps the biggest new court-mandated requirement is making the site council and family engagement team schedules, minutes, and lists of members available on every school website. To facilitate this, we place pages for both groups on every site's family tab over the summer with modules that contain the necessary information. Any existing pages already containing this information were moved to the new location. It is important that both groups have a minimum of one meeting per quarter, and all four meetings need to be added to the school website calendar by September 5th under the category of site council or family engagement team. If both groups meet together, a calendar entry still must be made for each group separately for a total of eight meetings on the school website calendar. If a joint meeting does occur, please contact sally.jacunski at tsd1.org. The list of members must be posted within five days of the first meeting, and the minutes within five days of each meeting. These requirements do not affect the current state requirements for posting. Again, all of these documents need to be converted to PDF format from a text document before they are uploaded in order to satisfy ADA accommodation requirements. Here's an example of what a page would look like. Note that the list of meetings on the left automatically fills once the calendar entries are made on the school calendar. No calendar entries should be made on this page. If your pages are not working correctly, please contact the district editor at sally.jacunski at tsd1.org. The next requirement deals with any parent groups that support your school. Because these parent groups are not TUSD entities, there are less requirements for adding them to the school website. You need to have a page for each group under the Family tab, and it needs to contain a description of the group and its purpose and contact information to join. It is great to have more information, particularly the schedule of meetings, but it is not part of the court requirement. Of course, additional information may always be included. One note, if you include agendas or minutes for parent group meetings, be sure to include them all and not just a sample. Here is an example of a simple parent page shown with the optional meeting schedule. Again, place meetings on the main school calendar and allow them to propagate out to this page. The last court mandated requirement is for every school to have a monthly newsletter available online. We went ahead and added a newsletter page to the school websites that didn't already have one. All newsletters for the year are to be made available and not just the latest one, although the latest one can be prominently displayed. All newsletters, just like any other document on the websites, must be in PDF format for ADA accommodation. If your newsletter is created in Publisher or Word, then you need to save it as a PDF from within the program. As was mentioned earlier when discussing the move to responsive mode, the appearance of our sites on mobile devices, particularly phones, is of great concern. The majority of our viewership actually occurs on smartphones. To make the sites more mobile friendly, the first change we made was to change the operation of the main menu. In the past, every menu item and all of its possible sub-menus were displayed when viewing the mobile version of the school website. Now when viewing the menu on the updated mobile site, only the top menu items appear until you touch one to expand on it. 
With the new menu system, if a page contains subpages, it must be empty and disabled. Keep in mind that even submenu items can have their own submenus. Disabling them is not something that editors have the ability to do, so if you wish to add or change your site's menu structure, contact the district web editor at sally.jacunski at tsd1.org with a list of your changes. Starting in late September to early October 2019, we will be offering new main page layouts. Each school's editor and principal will receive an email with links to the choices. It will be the principal's choice on which layout will be implemented on each school site. The new layouts will only affect the part of the main page currently occupied by the large photo slider. Each school will be able to choose the option they feel will best serve to highlight their school. This is an initial selection and more customization will be possible once we get everyone transitioned. The areas are flexible but are not designed to house multiple modules or pages of information. The goal is to present what is important about your school in a concise, attractive manner. We want to make it easier for people to reach the information that interests them, not present all of the information on one page, making it cluttered and hard to find on small devices. Continuing with our efforts to make phone presentation better, all of the school headers will be modified for better display on a phone. The school name will move to the left of the header so that it is the top item on the phone display. All logos will be resized to match the new responsive requirements and percentage sizing on the site. All the logos will be linked to a page on the school's website. The region logo will move to the right and have the district logo added to it. Once all of these changes are complete, the headers will be locked to prevent any external changes in the future. In the December 2019, January 2020 timeframe, it is anticipated that we will replace the current footer on all of the school sites with a more up-to-date quick link style footer. Included here are four different variations from major sites. We will develop two or three versions that you will be able to choose between. Contents will be determined with input from the sites and from an analysis of the Google Analytics, which will tell us which pages are most viewed by the public. This is a sample from Amazon's site. Here is an example from IBM's site. This is an example from the U of A website. And finally, here's an example from Stanford's site. In the late November, early December 2019 timeframe, the comment application described earlier will be replaced with the new Common Comment Complaint Concern platform called Awarity. This will not require any action on your part, but we would like to inform you that it is coming soon. If you wish to know more about Awarity, you can check out their site at awarity.com. The last item is a request that you work on making the information on your sites as complete and correct as possible. In the background, the communications team is using this content to complete the information database on the Arizona Department of Education website. Currently, there are six areas that can be clicked on to receive information about any Arizona school. These areas are currently showing no information provided for most of our TUSD schools. During the summer of 2019, communication team members filled in the school description section using the What is Special section from school sites. Work to fill in the rest is ongoing. The better the information on your school website, the better the information we can provide the ADE. As always, if you have any further questions, please contact Sally Jakunski at s-a-l-l-y dot j-a-c-u-n-s-k-i at tsd1.org. Or you can contact the communications department directly at media at tsd1.org. Yeah.